the cost of everything is going up here in Japan, and there's not anything I can do about it. Wow. I think I'll shop a little bit later. Oh gosh. How you doing everybody? Uh, inflation is at a record, 40 year record high. The exchange rate is at an incredible advantage to tourists coming here in Japan. And the question is, is it actually cheaper for you to come here to Japan despite the inflation that's going on here in Japan? Does it all just kind of balance out? We've noticed here in Japan the inflation uh, record inflation going on in the United States and the prices of everything has just skyrocketed. Life in general all around the world seems to be going up and it's not an unusual thing, inflation right now. But Japan was this weird place in the world where inflation never happened. In fact, we've been going through deflation for the last 20, 30 years. So inflation was a weird word. We didn't really ever hear of this. Ah, and then the, the headlines today read, Japan inflation hits a four-decade high weighing on the Bank of Japan position. And you see a guy who looks like Eric Surf 6 from a distance scouting out Amayoko Market. That's from the Japan Times. And it's true. The, the economic data says that uh, Japan was not supposed to shrink but actually uh, increase. And it was kind of a shock today when we got the news. Um, I've noticed this at the supermarket, though, over the course of the last few months, very slowly, especially when October hit, prices of everything seemed to start to go up. And what does that mean? That means that if you are coming here to Japan with an advantageous yen, which makes everything a little bit cheaper, you will be paying more now than you would have if you had come here in, let's say, August of 2022. And I think in 2023, prices might go up even higher. So that means that hotel rooms are going to go up. The price of everyday items like that bowl of gyudon at the restaurant probably going to go up. We're already seeing this. The price of beer already went up. We saw that increase in October, part of about 1,700 items in the supermarket that increased the prices. This month in November, prices of dairy, eggs, and other necessities are going to be going up. And this, this leads to a higher cost of li living for all of us, despite the fact that wages are not increasing here in Japan much at all. Very few places, despite record profits because the yen for exports is very advantageous to the economy here, it is not the case. That's right, Michael. They raised the price of beer. So I'm here in Tsukishima. I was just in a, a local supermarket taking out Arthur Vandalay. Thank you. Welcome. And I was just kind of observing the prices. And I, I noticed that, you know what? A lot of the prices went down. And I couldn't really explain that. I'm guessing the brands, this is a phenomenon that happened back when they last raised the taxes from the sales tax used to be 5% and they raised it to uh, 8% to 10%. And, and at the time, Prime Minister Abe wanted to raise it to 10%. There was a pushback and they, he lowered that raise to 8%. And it's still 8% for food and beverages and it's 10% for everything else. So if you take, take out delivery, you'll see 8% sales tax. The impact on Japan was that it, it was awful. People stopped buying products. There was an explosion of purchasing before the sales tax hit. And then when it turned to 8%, People just stopped. And it had an adverse effect. It, I believe that the government took in even less money despite, despite the fact that the, the taxes went up. So it was a big mistake. And they couldn't lower the taxes either. And I think they had a lot of debt as a result of the uh, Great Tohoku earthquake and, and uh, tsunami. There's just a, a lot of money going out and very little coming in, which makes my head scratches your head that Prime Minister Kishida wants to have another stimulus package. Where's he getting this money from? It's not from taxes. There's a reason why the yen is so expensive right now. The, I mean, the, it, it's so weak right now. And it's because Japan won't increase the interest rates. And the reason why they don't want to do that. And I, I have a degree in economy, in, in economics, but that does not make me an economist by any means. But I observe things and I feel things and I absorb the news around me. And my, my, my feeling, my, my <laughs> 20 years ago, 25 years ago, studying economics says that the, the economies are pretty much um, moved by the patterns of the people in which live in these countries. And the way the Japanese think about everyday life is completely different than the way that they think about it in the, in the West. Meaning, meaning 
uh, Japanese like to save their money way more than Westerners do. They love to put the money in the bank. They love doing this. That's why the interest rates are like negative. Can you believe that? People still are saving their money despite the interest rates being negative. And Japan doesn't want to increase the interest rates. Do you want to know why? Because if they did, everybody would start to save more and not spend more. And Japan wants people to spend more and not save more. And this is completely opposite to the way, the things of the way that the West is going. And I, I, it's my hypothesis of why they're not raising the interest rates. They don't want people, they don't want to encourage people to save the money. They want to encourage people to invest the money, to spend the money, to buy things. Because there was a stat that came out about 10, 15 years ago I saw. If the Japanese population, the, the elderly, senior citizens I should say, spent 1% of their savings, it would create an explosion in the Japanese economy like a volcano. People just don't spend money. They don't, um, and that's a problem. So with inflation, Japan's in a real pickle here. They're gonna have to find a way to get people to spend money despite the fact that the products are going up, but how do you do that when wages aren't going up either? Um, since the 2008 financial crisis, most of my friends have not been getting bonuses from their companies, and if they do get them, it's very, very small. Despite the fact that there's record profits right now, companies are still tight with the money. Of course they are. And this is creating, uh, this is wrecking havoc. Thus, I mean, it's all connected. It's not a conspiracy or anything like that, but it was quite very much connected. Japan had no choice but to open the country to tourism. It had zero choice, really, in this. Because without having some kind of sector that was on the rise, it doesn't look good for Japan in the fourth quarter. And we're, despite economists here saying that the first quarter of 2023 looks like things will stabilize. I, how could you have that confidence? They were, they've been wrong for the last three quarters. So um, it's an interesting read. It's an interesting read. I put a link in the description to the article from NHK that just hit here on the, uh, on the economy going to 40-year highs of in inflation, which is just weird in Japan. And then uh, um, there's a link in the description to this. I like, I, I love data. I, I'm sure that there's some people here that are the same as me. I love data. And this is from, this has all of the economics data from the government compiled in a database of all the price increases in the index um, year on year. And you can see that the, this, the, the one that I highlighted, the change over the year, the percentage of it. This is from October. And, and a lot of these are, are, sta re, re, are um, slated to go up in November. So I'm keeping an eye on these prices to see where it is. Imported beef, for example, Aussie beef in, in particular, it's up 11, almost 12% from the start of the year. That's pretty high for Japan. Sausages up 7.5, a travesty. If they were to do that, the bacon, they did do that, the bacon. Oh my gosh. Dairy products are up 3%, right? But they're going to be going up in, in uh, November, according to NHK, which scares the Scares the, I think that these numbers are uh, somewhat slightly off because I've seen milk is off the charts higher. I've seen butter off the charts higher. Um, and you see these price tags here. They've got deals going on. And, and as a, let me just go back here. When they raised the price, the um, tax rate, I think it was like 2006 or seven or something. It was, it was over 10 years ago. It feels like it anyways. Um, a lot of brands didn't want the pushback, so they lowered the prices right before the price increases. And what, what I'm seeing is the prices are actually getting lower on some items in anticipation of the rising prices that's going to be happening in November, in the second wave. And uh, brand loyalty is a thing here, especially for people shopping. Brand loyalty is important to these companies, and they don't want, they want, they want to be seen as being the good guys, like they had no choice. And they don't. They have no choice. The cost of fuel is going up. Um, and I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get into this, what it means for you as a traveler, but I, I wanna give you some background on this. So everybody knows the price of energy is going up worldwide. It, it's, that it sort of can't be helped in many ways. The war uh, in Ukraine and uh, you know, the, the pandemic and coming out of it, supply and demand, more people are traveling. There's more demand for fuel. 
Um, there's a lot of factors that are increasing the price of this. In Japan, there's, there's a, a trigger law in place. So right now, the price of gas is hovering around 160 yen per liter. And it's going to stay that way. Because if the price stays at or above 160 yen for three consecutive months, the Japanese government has some sort of law that triggers uh, tax breaks to keep the law, to keep the gasoline under 160 to liter. And I think that's like $6 or something per gallon if you're thinking about that in the U.S. Which isn't too, too bad for Japan. You'd think it'd be two or three times more. I think it's less than Europe. I'm not sure for U.S. gallon. But um, energy prices are going up and Japan has a law to reduce the taxes which are extravagant, which are pretty high on gasoline, uh, petrol. So we're seeing the gas sticking around at 160 per liter. And this is very significant because if you can't get around, you see all these cars going by, they're all, they're all paying pretty much the same price. If the cost of gas is up 30%, a lot of people do a lot less traveling and, and that cost for food is all transported onto the, to the manufacturers who have to ship their products by truck and there's a lot of trucking going on here. So that, that, that again goes into inflation. Now, what does that mean for you as a traveler? So everybody who's coming to Japan right now is getting a massive discount because you have an, a very favorable exchange rate, in particular to the United States. It's not for everybody. Let's, I think we can cross the street here. It's not for everybody, but um, I think it was 143 to the dollar. So you're getting a discount. However, like all these statistics and records, I don't know how accurate they are. There's what you feel and there's what the data shows, okay? It feels like, it feels like tourists are getting fleeced. I was looking at the price of hotels in Tokyo on booking.com and they're, they're well over 30% more of what they were uh, a year ago, which is understandable. D supply and demand, there's less hotels now than there were in 2019. Can't be helped. But it looks like the, because tourism returned, the price of everything has just gone up. So, despite the fact that there's a massive exchange rate advantage for tourists coming here, you're paying more for everything. And now with inflation going up, you're gonna be paying, what, 10, 15% more for stuff, I think, that you would have paid for in 2019. You have the advantage of the exchange rate, but hotels seem to have gone up like 30%. At least that's, that's what it feels like. Um, the price of getting around has gone up. I'm guessing that the price of the subway, the price of the buses, the prices of everything is going to go up. Check out that truck. Wow. Price, I wonder how much that truck pays in fuel. It's crazy. I've been getting reports from people who are booking flights to Japan. If you're coming here, you're paying up to three times more than what the ticket cost in 2019. Again, it really can't be helped because there are less flights coming to Japan and there's a, a much higher demand. These flights are quite full. The, the airlines can charge higher rates because people are still going to buy it. That's business, right? They're, not, they're in it to make money. Thus, they want to fill those flights and they don't want to open up more routes because they want to make more money. And then once demand gets high enough, then they will open up more routes, but if every airline does that, then they have to lower the prices. So they're, they're finding this really good balance. And ANA had record profits. Despite, again, the economy shrank, but ANA had record profits. That's a good sign for ANA. Hopefully the bonuses will return for the employees who work there too, because it is a wonderful airline. I like to see them all get a, get a bonus from this, because uh, this, despite the rising fuel costs, ANA made a profit. Uh, JAL, I believe, made a profit too. And the stock prices are going up like this. It's, it's all really positive news, right? Um, I'm looking here now at everybody that, there's a lot of people that are watching that are here in Japan right now. WRX Turbo is in the house, welcome. What do you guys think? What is the cost of the airline, the flights? Do you feel that the hotels are more expensive? Do you think that the exchange rate being favorable to you right now, if it were to dip to 130 to the dollar, let's just say in 2023, but prices went up, I don't know. Do you, do you think that Japan is still a bargain? Do you still wanna, still wanna come here? I'm not staying in a hotel, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> You're not the right person to talk to. 
It's cheaper today for a flight for me than in 2015. That's interesting. Yeah, the exchange rate's 140 the dollar. And this is an, another interesting fact. It probably would be over 150 the dollar if Japan had not uh, intervened. I think they spent about 30 to 40 billion US dollars to buy yen to make it stronger artificially to keep the exchange rate lower. And will it work? Probably not. Unless they raise interest rates, I, I don't see the yen getting stronger in the short term. I don't know about the long term. That's kind of cool, these rental um, scooters, but I think you need to have a driver's license in order to get those things. Yeah, there's a not license plate on the back, so you need to have a driver's license in order to get that. I think you have to register online. Coming from Australia, air price is high. Yeah, a lot of Aussies have been telling me that. And hotels about the same. Four times more to fly to Japan from Australia on Qantas, yeah. On October 20th, it hit 150 yen to the dollar, and then Japan triggered about a $30 billion yen buy to drop that significantly to like 143 to the dollar. So it's artificially lowered. He, like, here's the deal. Let's walk this way a little bit. Here's the deal. I think that, I think that Japan, again, I have a degree in, in economics, but I am nowhere near being an economist. This is just a feeling. That the impact of having a yen, a, a, a weak yen over 150 to the dollar is so detrimental to the economy that spending $30 billion to lower it artificially just for a small period of time has that amount of an impact on a, on a trillion dollar economy. That's crazy. Because of the weak yen, um, inflation is, you know, it's, it's getting really bad despite the economic policies of Japan. Again, you, you, Japan really can't, really shouldn't raise interest rates too much. You don't want to encourage people to save money here because they're saving it anyways. <laughs> you want them to spend it. Japanese don't spend money. Japanese don't spend money. Do you understand this? Everybody, there are people who do, but in general, compared to the West, the, the concept of multi nine, don't buy more than you need. Um, people don't buy sports cars. They don't want to stick out. Everybody buys pretty modest stuff. Thus, uh, automakers, instead of trying to upsell the car with bigger engines and flashier cars in this country, will add thousands and thousands of ad additions to the cars. That's why you get like a, a VCR, remember, with a thousand functions that you would never ever use, but in Japan that they would because they see value in that and would pay more into it just because that's like how the consumers here kind of think like that, which is different than in the West. It's fascinating to see that. And all of this is related to the way that you're going to be traveling in 2023. All right, let me sit down here. This is, this is so fascinating. I'm, I'm happy that we started this live stream inside of the supermarket and you can get, kind of get an idea. Everyday life here is much, much higher. I mean, that's not, that's not fair to say. It's higher. But I didn't start to notice it until last month. Um, when we, we tabulated all the grocery bills and it was noticeably higher and the energy costs for sure are electric and gas is up. Um, I don't know what the percentages is because we're using more electricity now because it got cold and Kanai is habitually cold. <laughs> so we get the heater on all the time. Oh my gosh, it's another, that's another story. Um, but the obviously, um, this is going to have a huge impact on the costs of for people visiting Japan because costs for hotels are going to go up and that's all going to be transferred over to you. But I think, I think artificially, the cost to tourists have gone up one way, some way or another. So I'm really curious to talk to tourists that are visiting here in Japan now and get an idea of what you think of the prices. You know what I mean? So in the next Q&A, which I'll be doing on, on uh, next Monday, uh, a call-in show we do here on the, on the channel, I'm going to be t trying to find some people to talk with me about their trips and the costs and that we're going to focus specifically on that because I really want to get a feeling of this. I'm, I'm looking at the data here. It's fascinating to see how everything has gone up. There's some things that haven't. Um, spinach has gone up 70, uh, 20 percent over the year. Broccoli has gone up 18.9%. Carrots, 
I feel sorry for the rabbits, although they prefer cabbage. 32% um, higher than uh, increase over the, over the course of this year. Spaghetti. I mean, like I'm looking at it. Kobe, uh, beef prices, of course, are going to be up too. Domestic, not so much. Spaghetti, 19.5% uh, increase over the course of the year. Chinese noodles, which is ramen, 10.4%. Uh, they could have written ramen. They didn't have to write Chinese noodles. Uh, in general, all food, six point, all food is up 6.2%. Um, and that's just October. I, I think that's going to get over 10%. I think that's going to get over to 10% once um, the data for November comes in because it, I think a lot of companies, again, because of brand loyalty, they've been eating the profits. They've, not the profit, eating the costs. And now it, it's too much to bear. I, I can tell you this because in the last live stream we were talking about this. There's a candy company that just went out of business or, or um, stated that they were going out of business. Um, they've been around for a hundred years. It's a hard candy. Uh, it comes in this really cute tin, bo tin box uh, container and it made a pretty good gift to give to people abroad because it's, it's all written in Japanese. Sometimes it's backwards. It's an amazing candy. I'm, I'm kind of sad about it. They, they, have, they could not survive the inflation costs of the raw materials to make their product. I think that they were hit pretty hard over the pandemic as well. So Again, it was a popular gift for people abroad. So it looks like they're done. Right, Sakuma Drops, Saya writes in here. So Sakuma Drops is, is not going to be here for people that are coming next year, which is sad because it's a 100-year product. Uh, these hard candies that are really colorful. Uh, you know, I remember, I think Kanai's grandfather always had a, a, a pack of those to give to the kids. <laughs> you know, 114-year history, writes in Leo, thank you. It's sad, and I, I actually saw a couple of them left at the 100 yen shop because you would find small tins of them at the, at the Hyakuen shop. So you could still find them around Japan. I'm trying to get them for my, our Daimyo supporters uh, on Patreon. Um, I send packages to them every month, but you know, I can't find enough of them. And I think that they're, uh, I think you can only buy two per person, so I'd have to go back quite a number of times <laughs> to get them. I don't know how I'm gonna make that work. I don't have that kind of free time, but uh, very, very um, interesting um, to see that inflationary change and the inflationary impact on Japan. I don't think it is exactly the way that the analysts thought it would go. What scares me, I guess, I guess not, not scary, that's not the right word. I think if we start to see, you can see in the distance there, I'm walking over to there, a vending machine, right? I think if we see the cost of drinks in the vending machine go from 120 to 130 to 140, and then eventually to 150 for a can of drink. Again, a pet bottle is already at 150, and it, I, I believe it was raised to 160 yen for a pet bottle in the vending machine. Let's go take a look. This is one in a, in a neighborhood here. That's, I think, how you can really tell. When I got to Japan, it was 100 and, 100, and 110 yen for a 12 ounce can. This was 25 years ago. And that was the cost for a very long time. And then just recently we saw, oh, this just happens to be a budget. <laughs> You'll find these in the neighborhoods. Um, this is actually a budget um, vending machine. You have to find one of the Coca-Cola machines to really see it. So that proves, that goes against my point. These are always, one of the reasons these are a little bit cheaper is because they're also sometimes close to the expiration date. <laughs> so when you get it out, you're like, what? That expires next month? So that's why. But the cost of drinks in general are, are, is going up. Um, and if you see that total for pet bottles go up to like 170, and 12 ounce cans go up to 150 or something like that, then you're really going to see, you're really going to feel the inflation and, and, and understand it here. Again, it's another discount machine, not the best example. <laughs> Is that the flex capacitor? That's the flex capacitor. Wow, that's gotta be really good ginger ale. Wow. 
I, it's, I can't. But I think you get the picture. All right, I'm looking back here on the chat. What say you, everybody here? Always found prices in some local vending machines lower. That's, that's true. Um, at the supermarket, I mean, what is the real cost of, a, of a, a 500 milliliter bottle of water? It's like, what, like probably 20 yen at most? Because you can get a two liter bottle of water for 99 yen, 98 yen. So why is a smaller bottle that's a quarter of the size more expensive than a two liter bottle? It, because of convenience. So it's just the price, it, there's always the price that the consumer is willing to pay and that's the price. There's a price where they're not willing to pay, there's a price where they're willing to pay, and then you find that, that median point where if you raise the price too much, people aren't going to buy it compared to your costs. And I wonder if the makers of the vending machines have come up, uh, have, have found that if they were to raise the prices of the drinks this much, then it would, the amount of people buying the drinks would decrease by a certain percentage so it didn't, doesn't make sense for their, their revenue, their profits, to raise the price because, yeah, they'll, they'll have to eat the costs of the uh, transportation and all the other stuff, the increased gases, gas prices and, and, and such uh, for the ingredients, the plastic and all this other stuff. But if they were to raise the price, their revenue would actually drop even further than if they were just to eat those, eat those costs because they're already making profits on a drink that costs them 10 yen to make. You understand? It's weird. So a lot of people here are uh, starting to feel the pinch. And I think for tourism here, it does have an impact. I think that, I think that a lot of the hotels know that you guys are rich too and probably taking advantage of that. All right, here we can see it now. Bottle of water, this used to be 120 yen. It's 130 yen. This is so... Okay, now we can see it here. 170 yen for a pet bottle of green tea. These prices have just raised recently. That's crazy. 180 yen for this. This used to be 150 yen. It's, it's up by 30 yen. This is closer to the street where people buy stuff. 170 yen for a pet bottle. And it looks like these prices just changed recently because it's uh, the label is over. Actually, all these labels look like like they're brand new. And you can see this is the, uh, a new price on this. So I, a can of coffee is still 100 yen. I believe that there's, there's a point where they try to keep consumers happy with one item that, that's really popular, but all the other stuff got raised. That's crazy. Even the soup got raised? Oh no, they raised the price of this corn portage you know, by 10 yen. That's huge, folks. That's really a big deal. I did not expect that. Wow. It's, it's uh, harder to tell with the digital stuff because actually you can't really see that's 140 yen. It's not flashing like that to me. It's just because of the 100, and, 100 hertz uh, and the camera. Something called the Kanto flicker. Everything in Tokyo and the area um, because of the uh, uh, hertz frequency, the frequency of the electric electricity here makes things flash. So you have to keep the shutter speed at 100 <laughs> for camera. It makes it really hard to film in Tokyo. I know, that's it's craziness. The price of a sushi meal is probably going to go up. Luxury items absolutely will be going up. I wonder if sushi places like... Um, I'm thinking now, I wonder if high-end sushi prices are going to raise as a result. I wonder if, they're already pretty extravagant, but we're looking at the cost of fish here. So I have the data on this for October. This just, this is new, they just, this ju just came in. Hold on a second, do I have it? On the list, the link that I gave you in the description, I came here by bicycle because I originally initially lost, I left my phone at home, so I had to start the live stream late. <laughs> I was like, what? I left, I left my phone at home. All right, the list, there's a link in the description to the e-stats 
take that into the, the monthly database for food and you'll be able to see. But the price of fish, again, it shows the, the year to year change. Um, and I saw be imported beef is really high. Domestic beef is up just 2.4%, but I bet you that, that increases uh, this month. Everything seems to be going up in November. Uh, I think they had a list of, of 800 new products going up. Ryan C. writes in here, Hi, John. Have you talked to people in Japan who experienced a real estate bubble crash in the 1980s? That must have been horrible. That absolutely was. I mean, imagine how... the real that's what, Ginza had the most expensive real estate in the world at the time, and then the bubble burst, and then they didn't. So there was a lot of money lost in those years. Um, I talked a little bit with Adam Fulford. He was uh, here during the bubble era. He's been with NHK since he first came to Japan. Um, as a you know, young man, like in the 1970s, I guess. He's been here for over 50 years now. And I, I've heard stories from him about the bubble era and how the prices were increasing and, and the, the, the yen was super strong. Um, you could buy so much, I think it was like 100, like 70, I, I, it was just super strong. You could buy a lot of stuff. The Japanese had very good purchasing power, bought a lot of property in the United States, which, you know, I'm glad that they did because the property in Japan just busted out, busted down. We can take a look at the menu at, at Moss Burger too, see if some of the costs of fast food have, have gone up. And it looks like they might have. Yeah, that's pretty expensive for, uh, is that wrong? Hold on a second. So a set menu for a Moss cheeseburger, a set menu is 850 yen? That seems a little bit high. So for me, the value of the yen, the way I feel it, is one, one dollar is 100 yen, and it still feels like that to us in Japan. So this, to us, feels like eight, eight $8.50 for a, a small drink, a small fries, and a Moss burger. Which, it is a double Moss cheeseburger, so... <laughs> still. That, it just, that feels wrong. So it looks like the prices for the for Moss Burger have gone up as well. Interesting. Gonna be cooking at home more. So in the comments below, for everybody who is uh, thinking about coming to Japan, I want to do more of this. I want to keep studying this. It's fascinating, the data and, the, and to, to see the impact. Will this have an impact on tourism? I'm not sure. What you see before you make the trip here, you do not see the inflation. You don't see the, the cost of gyudon. You don't see the cost of a high-end high sushi dinner at, at uh, uh, a restaurant in Tokyo. You don't see that until you get here, right? So you don't know that. You don't know what's going on. All you see is the air, air fa airplane fare which is now two to three times more for some. It's actually cheaper for some, some, some areas and more expensive for others. You see the price of that. And then you see the exchange rate, which is very advantageous to almost, almost everybody. And then that's how you make your decision on if Japan is a bargain. But when you get here, and maybe your hotel, which is more telling. But when you get here, you're gonna notice in 2023, the price of things at the vending machine are higher. The price at the convenience store for on onigiri and things like this is higher. The price for Kit, -Kat, Kit Kats are higher. Everything is going up. So yeah, you're getting a discount, but it's not the same as if then in 2019 or even earlier this year. And that's the point of this live stream. Just took 30 minutes to say that. <laughs> I love live streaming. It's fun. I also want to say one last thing here before, before I cut off. Uh, anybody who's coming to Japan, I know if you're a first timer, you're going to be wanting to go to uh, do the, the tourist thing. You fly into Tokyo, you take the Shinkansen, you go to Kyoto, uh, then you go to Osaka. You might do one side trip to a place like Takayama to go to a, an old village or something. Uh, and then you go to Hiroshima, Himeji Castle, then you go to Hiroshima to the Peace Museum and maybe Miyajima if you, if you have heard about that and then you, you, you leave. Maybe you go to Nara as well to see the deer. Although I think the deer in Miyajima are way better. <laughs> Nara, Nara's deer is so aggressive. Miyajimas are not as aggressive. Maybe they're islanders and they're a little bit shy. I don't know. That's cool. 
but I would highly recommend you get off of the tourist beat. And if you want to know more about that, join me for the Q&A questions. Subscribe to this channel, join me for the Q&A sessions on our Discord server, and we're going to be talking more and more about um, hidden places outside of the city of Tokyo that you need to add to your itinerary when you come to Japan. You really need to. Discord is this really amazing place where we can talk about this. Uh, you can call in and talk to me and I will listen to your itinerary and then we're gonna make some adjustments and uh, um, hopefully really improve the quality of your trip here. Um, I wanna say thank you to our Patreon supporters. This is this month's postcard. Uh, this is a, um, a Tori Gate. It's just such a, a very, such a very character, a lot of character in this, in this gate with the Ito, the, the rope around it here. Um, every month I have a postcard. This is the one from this month. Um, so thanks for everybody for backing that. And the stamps are legendary. I always try to find the best stamps. You can see this month we have uh, fireworks. This is the postal mascot celebrating a 10 year anniversary of the mascot. Can you see that here? So there's some pretty fun stamps. He's making okonomiyaki down there. It's a butter toast. And there's like gold on all of them, which is kind of neat. There's an onsen bath. He's, he's taking a bath here. See that? That's cute. So you're gonna get one of these 10 stamps. All of them are, are really fun stamps. I put them on there. And I have a post, postmark from Tokyo here. Can you see the gold? The gold's not glistening. Yeah. So you can get those postcards. Uh, there's a new one every month. All right. Thanks everybody for watching. Uh, again, if you are in Japan and if you're noticing the price increases, leave me a comment below. It's gonna be fascinating to read your feedback on this because I want to understand uh, how travel in Japan is being impacted as a result of, of all of the factors in this and I kind of uh, will keep on talking about this because travel update is over everybody travel update is now this kind of stuff how is it, how is your travel trip being impacted by the conditions here within Japan is that dry mom that's dry mom see everybody thanks